Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Holy Habitus. This week we're going to be looking at the theme of doorways. Hence the little stunt I just pulled. Hope you enjoyed that. This is based on an idea from David Pawson's book, The Normal Christian Birth. A very helpful resource in terms of thinking through some of the features of discipling new believers, a topic we've been looking at the last few weeks on Holy Habitus. And in this book, um, David Pawson kind of does an extensive exposition and cataloguing of uh, stories in the New Testament of Christian initiation, of people coming to faith. And he identifies in the pages of the Bible four features that are kind of the assumed and perennial features of Christian initiation and they are as follows repentance firstly repentance there's an assumption that when you come to faith what you're doing one of the things you're doing is cutting away the old life of rooting out sin of taking measures to put right things that were wrong in your life the second step or doorway is faith in Jesus putting your trust in Jesus entering into a trust relationship and setting out on a journey with him. The third is water baptism. When you become a believer, you get baptized. Just do it, that's what the Bible says. It's a dramatic outward symbol of a, a dramatic inward change, a miracle of God, a regeneration, and, and it's symbolized by, uh, by the water washing away of sins and all of that kind of stuff. That's an essential feature. And the fourth doorway is the reception of the Holy Spirit recognizing that when we become a Christian God comes to live in our hearts by his spirit and we need his power and his presence in order to live the life of discipleship we can't do it in our own strength so these are the four spiritual doors and we'll explore those a bit more in the coming weeks an important thing to say is that they don't necessarily all happen in that order sometimes in the pages of scripture you see these jumbled up in people's lives for example Cornelius and his family um, Peter comes to preach to them and they all receive the Holy Spirit in power and and Peter is left with this conundrum. He says, well, what's to stop them being baptized? So they baptize them, even though they're Gentiles. And that was crazy. Another story is of Paul in Ephesus when he meets the church there and he finds out they've received a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. They've done in doorway number one. But when he asks them about the Holy Spirit, they say, we didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. And so Paul prays for them and they receive the Holy Spirit and he makes up for the kind of uh, deficit in their journey to that point. So these four things don't necessarily happen in that order. They don't all necessarily all happen in one day or even one year, but they need to happen for somebody to have a healthy birth into the Christian life. So we need to have these four features on our radar uh, as we seek to encourage and help people. We can't walk through the doors for them, but we can signpost the doors and give them some pointers to make sense of that journey.